Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and we are in the workshop and studio. Thank you so much for coming along with me and hanging out. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, as you know, or maybe you don't know, I'm actually in the process of transforming this small industrial building. It's 20 feet by 29 feet uh, deep into my workshop, my YouTube studio, uh, my man cave, kind of an all around cool place to hang out and prototype stuff. That's what I do here on this channel. And uh, I'm just trying to make it as efficient as possible and I'm bringing you along for the ride. Uh, if you haven't watched the last video, I made that huge monolithic workbench back there out of I-beam, some steel, some pack out boxes, and some wood I got from Home Depot. Uh, we built that and I love it. I think it's uh, probably my favorite workbench I've ever owned. Most of my workbenches up until this point are all just like, you know, plywood and two by four. So the bar was set pretty low, but uh, I do love that thing and uh, I am totally stoked to have it. Um, it was 100% worth building. If you didn't watch that video, I'll put a link right up here so you can go check that out. Now, um, I also installed that cool TV back there uh, to sort of use as a computer screen. The, the computer CPU, the, the body of the machine, uh, the whatever you call that thing. Uh, is sitting there on the bench um, and that will not live there. It's going to go down somewhere over there eventually. Um, and then uh, later down the road, we actually did put in a grind room over there. It kind of keeps the dust contained in the back uh, area of the workshop. Uh, that's eyes and glass there. You can kind of close yourself in. It does a pretty good job of keeping the dust uh, from ent entering the, you know, the sort of the cleaner space, which is out here. Um, we've done uh, numerous other things. I built that welding table uh, so I can roll that around and use that. It's like a welding table, welding cart, made a video about that. Uh, we've done all kinds of fun stuff in here. Uh, and I, I got to tell you, I feel super blessed to have this because 15 years ago, um, during the, uh, the economic depression of 06, 07, uh, you know, I ended up having to sell a lot of my tools to actually make the payments on a lot of things. And... Um, you know, we had just started the business. Uh, there was, uh, you know, we had two little kids and um, I really needed money. So I ended up selling all my tools. Now, 15 years later, I'm actually uh, in the process of rebuilding my workshop and studio. I feel so blessed to be able to do that. And I can do that only because of you guys. You guys support what I do here. And um, I truly do appreciate you. So thank you for watching. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you to everyone who is bought and purchased anything from housemade.us. The, the grinder project is still cranking along. Um, we're just making huge strides with every day um, and it's all because of you guys. So I am humbled and I am blessed to have you in my life. So thank you so much. Anyhow, today we are going to be installing that Wilton 79A vise. And uh, it is something that I've wanted for a long time. Many, many years ago, like 20 years ago, I had one, my father gave me one. Um, it's like a front loading bench vise, mounts up underneath the bench itself so it doesn't ride on top of the bench, which I really like. And I also really feel like it's one of the most efficient vise designs out there. Um, it, when I owned one, I always used that one first. And the reason is, is because you can crank the lever to the left, you can pull the thing out like a drawer, and then you can throw whatever you want in there, uh, cinch it down, and it's just, it's really crazy easy to use. Um, also, it's very, very effective. Um, so by putting that all together and, you know, all the years ago, selling the old vice and not having one for many years, I finally did my research and found, uh, the Wilton 79A and I actually got it on Amazon. If you're interested in buying it, I'll put a link down in the description so you can buy one and install it on your workbench. Uh, and if you click that link, I actually get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon. So it's a win-win for both of us. Uh, I will tell you that, um, having one of these is kind of a game changer for your workshop. It's, it's just so versatile and easy to use. Um, I, I'm just stoked to have it. So you might be asking yourself, Brian, why the hell are you showing me how to install vice? It seems very simple, very rudimentary, right? It's like four bolts and, uh, you know, you just bolt that thing up. Well, I thought that too, until I looked at the instructions and I thought, you know what? Uh, no, there's more to this. Um, and I think it's important that we discuss, placement of the vise and also how you mount it. Uh, because if you don't do it right, 
you know, it, it can lead to years of um, the thing just eventually not functioning correctly. And also it could be dangerous. It could fall off the, the bench and uh, hurt you because it's mounted underneath. It could fall. It's very heavy. Um, and, you know, while you're cranking on this thing, you want to ensure that you did it the right way. So come along with me. We're going to do it right here in the housework workshop. And, uh, yeah, screw it. Let's do it. All right, let's take a look at what a Wilton 79 bench vise actually is and what it looks like. Um, the, this is actually how it comes right out of the box, just like this. There's no assembly required, which I really like. Um, you just really ultimately have to mount the thing, which is, you know, kind of in, a little job in and of itself. Uh, but one of the things, my, one of my initial reactions to this thing is that it's actually really heavy. Uh, which gives me the sense of quality. Now, I know that's not always the case, but uh, after reading all the reviews on Amazon and kind of doing my research online, looking at some forums, I realized that a lot of people use this vice. There's a handful of uh, reviews out there that sort of talk about how things line up with this thing. Maybe their vice didn't quite clamp down straight, things like that. Uh, but all of those were resolved by Wilton. They, they actually took the vise back and sent them a new one. And in my case, mine came perfectly plumb and square. Um, the, the outside is powder coated. I like the color. Uh, you know, I didn't think I would like teal, but, and, you know, hey, it looks kind of cool to me. It doesn't really bother me. It, it blends in with my workbench okay. Um, and one of the other things I, I noticed right away is the, the jaws of this thing are these two pieces of wood and they're magnetic so they've got big magnetic strips right on the back side here and if you don't want to use them you just pull them right straight out they're not bolted into the unit and then you can actually put your own uh, jaws in this thing if you want which i think is really kind of cool and then when you're ready to put the wood pieces back in they literally just slide back in and magnetize themselves to the vise all right i'm excited to get this thing installed so let's take a look at the instructions and see what we need to do all right, as you can see here, Wilton does a great job uh, with their instructions. It's a bare bones, basic stuff, but it's, it's really good. This is a printed template here uh, that we're going to use to actually, you know, draw. This is a life size, perfect sizing uh, to actually figure out what we need to do as far as a spacer goes. Because as you can see here, uh, it calls for a three inch thickness uh, of the bench. Now, not, not a lot of people have a three inch thick tabletop including myself i think this one's about an inch and a half so we're going to need to double some either some plywood up or i also have some of that pvc trim i was thinking maybe we would try that and then use uh some of these these lag bolts now i had to actually order these because the hardware store didn't have three eighths of an inch thick three inch lag bolts which is what this calls for they had like uh like two and a half inches, and they had two inches, and then they had three and a half inches, but specifically they call for three eighths inch diameter by three inch long lag screws. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, or you can bolt it down from the top of the, the workbench, but I really don't want to do that. I actually want to go up from underneath because I want to leave my workbench top smooth. don't want to drill into it. Uh, the other piece, piece of documentation they give you is all the parts and everything here. Uh, this goes for both the 78A, 79A, 78C, and 79C. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is I'm just going to file this away and keep this uh, so that if I need parts down the road, I'm guessing I never will, but you know, maybe I'll be passing this along to my son. Uh, so let's look at the spacer material that we're going to use and then get set up. I'm going to use this as my template and then we'll do some measuring and then we'll get to drilling and figuring this and cutting, I guess, too. So here we go. All right. So I went ahead and uh, made a photocopy of, of this so that I could uh, destroy this one and not destroy my original. Um, so I can start uh, looking at this template. I actually have a piece of this uh, leftover trim I was telling you about. This is that cellular PVC trim. I get this at Home Depot. It's actually, um, it's, it's really cool stuff. It's, it's not wood. It's plastic PVC, obviously. 25-year uh, warranty on it. Uh, this is uh, one inch thick by um, six inches. So if I take and do my math here, let's see, this requires... Uh, three inches total thickness of shim or spacer. So I have an inch 
So if I have an inch and a half tabletop, which is this guy right here, and I have an inch here that gives me two and a half inches, I'm going to need another half inch thick of something. And I have a piece of plywood around here. I think that's half inches. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to do a combination of this PVC, which I'll, I'll sandwich up uh, against the, the, um, the vise itself. And then I use a half inch piece of, of plywood to do that. And what they call for here is kind of interesting. They say uh, that you should drill a hole that's uh, 7 sixteenths of an inch through the shims. So what I'm thinking is, is we'll do the shims, we'll drill everything at the same time, cut and drill everything at the same time, and then uh, we'll drill pilot holes up into the workbench itself. That way the lag has something to bite into on its way in. So let's get this uh, trim cut and matching up to our template here. Uh, and we'll, uh, then we'll look at the bottom of the bench to see what we gotta do. I think everybody should have one of these cutting mats They're fantastic the way you don't cut into your worktops whatever and it also it keeps your blades nice and sharp because it's soft all right there's a template a little bigger than we need it to be but i don't think that would hurt anything i think that's that's it's okay can do that. Grab my punch. Hey, turn on the vacuum. Got it. Turning on the vacuum. Hey, turn the vacuum off. All right, so I've decided I want it on this side. And uh, I initially I was kind of confused as to why this needed to be so thick, but it makes a lot of sense now because um, the, the, the vise should be mounted flush with the top of the workbench. So um, how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take the spacer. I need to drill some pilot holes, so I need to take the spacer and clamp it to the bottom of the work surface here so I can scribe my lines. And we're going to use the clamp as our sort of our, our line for figuring out, you know, the vise needs to sit flush here so the clamp will also push this piece of wood flush. And if I need to, I'll grab another clamp and I'll throw it up. We'll do it this way. Just to ensure we got everything nice and flush. Or even a little bit recessed would be fine by me. All right, so we've got our lines scribed. And now we need to drill some 9 30 seconds holes up into the work surface so that we can crank down our lag bolts. Since we've got this clamped up here, uh, we might as well just go ahead and drill our pilot holes using the, the shims as a guide. Although this one's a little too close to my holes. Move this over. And then we want to just make sure that we don't drill too far uh, and go through the top. So. That looks good. 
good. Now you'll notice they use two different size bolts down here and that's because this one's a little bit longer than this one. I felt like I wanted a little more depth on half of these so I got some uh, three and a quarter size lag bolts and then some three inch. So half and half I figure we'll split the difference and make a go of it. And <clears throat> the way that this slides up in there we can leverage the uh, space like so. Bring this up there. Sometimes the preparation for a project like this is most of the project. I'm super happy with how it came out. I'm also very, very pleased with the quality of the vise. And just a reminder, if you'd like to find this exact vise, I'll put a link down in the description so you can find one right on Amazon. Also, I really wanted to mention that I do have a podcast now. It's called Work For It. You can find it on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple iTunes, and also on the Makery Network website, which is makery.network. Uh, my co-host, Benjamin Butler from the Benjamin Butler Company, he's a woodworker and I'm a metal worker. So uh, we joined forces to create uh, Work For It, which is a podcast based around uh, the business of making and whatever we got going on in our workshops and studio. It's a weekly digest and it's really fun. So go out and find us, work for it on Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and Apple iTunes. Also, there are many ways to support my channel right here in my workshop and studio. You have entered in by donating money to the Patreon program or through uh, Buy Me A Coffee and all of that really helps me continue making content like this. It helps me to buy tools so I can and supplies so I can keep going and doing the things that I'm doing right here. Also, you can go to my website, housemade.us. You can buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project that we designed, prototyped, and ultimately brought to manufacture right here on YouTube. Thank you so much for everything you all have contributed to my life. I truly appreciate you. And thank you so much for hanging out in my workshop and studio. I hope to see you on the next video where we are going to be hanging wall control on these walls right back behind me here. And I'll get all of my tools out of my tool chest and onto the wall behind me. So I hope you come along for that ride as well. Thank you so much, guys. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.